Hello and welcome to class six of the AQS Let's Quilt series. And we're going to be making six quilts in six weeks. And how are we going to do that? We're going to do it by using pre-printed panels. And you know, this program comes to us from our sponsors. Bernina, who's provided the Bernina 770 Quilters Edition machine. Branson, where we will be doing an AQS show in March. We need um, a, a cabinet, and that's provided by Tracy's Tables. Ironmatic Ironing Board, Star Forest Quilts, and Panasonic with our double pointed iron. So those are our sponsors for this program. And besides that, we don't need very many other tools. We need a few rulers. We're gonna be trimming our squares to four and a half inches. So I have a four and a half inch ruler. And if you had a six inch ruler, it just needs to have a diagonal line on it for you to be able to trim the squares. I have a six by 24 long ruler to cut strips. We'll be cutting some 10 inch squares. So I have a 12 and a half inch, but if you have 10 inch ruler or 10 and a half inch ruler, that works fine too. Fabric, uh, we're using red and black fabric for our border today. And I have a Disney print that is Minnie Mouse that I'll use as the backing on this quilt. So we're gonna be doing this Disney Minnie and Mickey panel and it's red, white, black, and gray. So let's talk a little bit about the color, first of all. I pulled out some of the blocks that we made in the exquisite scrap class because we worked there with a lot with color value. And one of the things that as we look at making these panels into wall hangings, you wanna make sure that we feature the center of that. And so because of that, as I was working on this, I chose not to use any white in the borders, even though there's a lot of white in this panel or gray, I'm only using red and black. Uh, but if you didn't wanna use, say the, the color in your quilt that was the lightest was a yellow, and you didn't wanna repeat that, you remember that when you have light colors, they jump forward, dark colors recede. So if we don't use that very lightest, you could see that you could maybe use a tannish color or some other color that wouldn't necessarily be white, like is in your panel. And that way it focuses all of the attention right on the design in your panel. As far as the other colors for the borders, you can see that as long as you have good contrast, and I will, I'll just open these up and let you look at a couple others here, where we have a medium with a dark. You can see that works really well. And here we have uh, something in the pink and red family with a dark. Also works really well to put a framed border on your quilt. Now, I want to walk you through the process that I used to determine what I was going to put as a border on this quilt. And so I think I've told you on some of the other classes, I do use electric quilt a lot for my designing of my quilts. Saves lots of cutting of fabric and lots of things that you might just end up throwing away. All right, so I tried it using red, white, and black. And if you look at this picture, do you see how that white almost takes over from the central design of the panel? All right, so then I went from what if I use gray instead of white. Okay, so that's not too bad. It's a lot of little half square triangles though. And I did it so that my dimensions would be even twos. So uh, that, that's why I have the really small ones here. All right, so then I went with red and black. Now, do you see when I use red and black, how all of the light parts of this really show up? and it just reinforces the red and black in Mickey and Minnie. Okay, so then I played with those half square triangles and did a zigzag around. Again, it's okay. Uh, it's a lot of triangles again. And 
What I ultimately ended up with was four inch half square triangles so that I could make this halo of red. And do you see how that just pulls the red right out of the center and the black frames it. And then the red on the outside edge will be my binding. So that's what we're going to do. And that's the design I chose. And so today we're going to take the Disney Mickey and Minnie panel and we're going to add on the half square triangle border. And, and then here along the edge, we have just a solid border. So before we get started, we're going to take a short break with our sponsors. And when we come back, I'm going to show you how to straighten a panel. Most of them need a little bit of straightening. We'll be right back. As any artist will tell you, hitting the perfect notes means finding the perfect instrument, Bernina. So get the machine that always hits the right chord and start making beautiful music together. Bernina, made to create. Tracy's Tables has all of your custom sewing table needs. Visit tracystables.com to see the complete line of unique tables, carts, and shelves. And all of Tracy's Tables are made in the USA. Okay, so when you buy these panels, because of the way they're spun and, and wound very quickly onto a bolt, sometimes the design is a little askew. Now, you know it was printed straight because they have the selvages fixed on both edges. And so often we will need to straighten the, the panel before we can do anything with it. Well, so here's what I've done with this one. I have pinned it along the design right here. This is the salvage edge. So I've pinned the design. So when you flip that over, you should see the pin on the stripe on the back side so that you know you have it lined up properly. I've done the same thing down both sides. All right, so now you know how I always talk about let the steam and let the iron do the work for us. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to be pressing toward the fold. Let me get that straightened out. And you can see, you'll see that it kind of gets a little puckery as you get close to the center. All right, well, so we're going to start at our outside edge. And you know, I always recommend glass head pins. And this is one of those occasions when they will be very handy because they're glass heads which means I can iron over them and they're not going to melt. So I'm going to just press. Actually I guess in this case I'm actually ironing because I am ironing the fabric toward the center. Okay so now I've got that part all flattened out. One of our new sponsors for our program this week is Ironmatic, and they make this wonderful ironing board, which has an iron rest, and the cover itself has a cotton layer, a wool felt layer, and then the cover. And it keeps it so your fabric doesn't slip. So I'm gonna start at the top edge, salvage edge, and I'm gonna to press toward the center. Okay, so now I have it all ironed, and the next step that I will do with this is I'm going to, because we want to make sure that it holds that shape that we've given it, I'm going to use a little of the faultless spray. Okay, so now the next thing that we're going to do is try to figure out exactly what size we want to cut this down to. So I'm going to use the big ruler. And so this is 18 and a half inches. Okay, I really want to make sure that I can put four inches, uh, and that's half of it. So 18 and a half would be 36, 30, uh, 
37 inches. And so for us to be able to put four inches, four inch blocks on the edge of this quilt, it needs to be a multiple of four, doesn't it? So if I have 37 inches, if I make it 40 inches, that would be 10 blocks, wouldn't it? And so that would be the sides of the quilt. And so we'll measure the, the, across the width of it and do exactly the same thing. So if I know that it's got to be 40 inches and I have 37, and a, 37 inches, I have three inches is the difference. So we want half of that on each side. So I'm going to take my ruler and mark a, an inch and a half from the edge to give myself a cutting line. And I'll do that all the way along. And in this case, because I have it pinned, I can cut it and just align my ruler and just make myself two or three points on here to align the ruler. And so that's how easy it is to cut it down and make it fit your border. Now, I will tell you, I'm not going to cut anything yet. I'm going to go ahead and make my half square triangles so that I can lay it on that edge and make sure it fits before I do the cutting of the panel itself. So we're going to lay that aside for right now. And next we're going to work on the half square triangles. And for those of you who participated in class number two, which was quilting with triangles, uh, there are several different methods that I showed you in that class. And we're going to use one of those methods today. And that is we're going to cut a big square and so I've cut one of black and one of red and I'm going to turn it so that they are right sides facing and I'm going to draw a diagonal line corner to corner in both directions And you'll remember how I suggested that you start in the center so you don't drag your pencil along that bias line that we have right there in the middle. So there's one direction. Let's just turn this. And we're going to draw the line the opposite direction. I'm using the Soline pencil, and the Soline pencil is one that I like because it has both a black and a white uh, graphite in it, so that you're able, actually I guess it's chalk, a lead in it. And so now I have my diagonals both directions. How did I size this? Okay, I want a four inch finished half square. Well, normally you'd say add seven eighths of an inch, but I always add one inch because then you can trim them down and all of your half square triangles are gonna be exactly the same size. So if I have one triangle that's five inches and a second triangle that is five inches, if I do this and sew a fourth of an inch on both sides of those lines, it will give me eight half square triangles. It's a real fast way to make the half square triangles. So I've already done that. And so you can see that I've, I've stitched a half an inch and I use black thread. I'm using 50 weight black thread uh, for piecing. And so once we've done that, now we're ready to cut that in half. Well, cut it into eights, really. So the first thing I'm gonna do is Measure five inches, let's get this on a line here, five inches, and I should be cutting right across the X's that this forms in the center. You notice I stood up when I did the rotary cutting. That's the optimum pressure to make the blade work properly. Now I have this on a Lazy Susan so I can turn it Again, I'm going to line it up on five inches. And again, I should be going across the center in the opposite direction. Let's 
Now once I've done that, I can take these apart and now all we're going to do is we're going to cut them from corner to corner. You can see this will give us eight half square triangles. So you need to sew five squares together like this to make all the half square triangles that you're going to need for the whole quilt, the whole border. Okay, now the next step is to do the pressing. A tip for pressing is that whatever side you want the seam allowance to fall to is the side you should pick up when you press. So I'm just gonna pick up the black square or the triangle and set the corner and then I'm gonna press with the grain of the fabric so that I don't stretch that bias seam in there. Now, for this particular quilt, you will find that you can nest the seams if you press one that direction and you press one toward the red. So that's what I'm going to do. So as I do this pressing, I'm going to pair up my half squares, one toward the black, press the corner, and go with the direction of the green. The next one I'm going to pick up the red side. Again I'm going to set the corners, press with the green, and so actually you're saving yourself quite a bit of time if you do this as you're pressing because you've got to be here and press them anyway. Set one corner, set the second corner, and now we're going to Go with the green. Now I'll do a red one and a red one. And that's how easy it is to press these. And so now I can lay these out here next to my sewing machine and I know that I'm already have them in pairs to sew them together. We're going to take a brief word from our sponsor, and when we come back, I'm going to show you how we match these up, nest those seams, and sew them together. All right, now before I'm ready to sew these, I told you that I oversize these just slightly so that I can trim them down. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use, these are four and a half inch finished squares. So I'm going to lay my diagonal line right on my seam line. You can see li just little bits that I'm cutting off of there, but it will make all the difference in the world when you get ready to put your blocks together. All right, so here's my cut end. So now I can lay the ruler right on those edge, align the seam line. Okay, so one is all done.
<laughs> you can see it's not cutting very much off, but we'll be glad we did that. And then it also gets rid of these tails from the corner. Okay, and so we would just continue on trimming those all down. And so now here's where the fun part comes. All right, so I have two half square triangles and you can see that we've matched reds and we've matched black sides. So the seam is right here and right here and right here. So I'm gonna go through this and I need one, two, three, four, five with the black B forming the V. So that's what I'm going to do. And now, remember I had you do half of these with the seams going one direction and half of them going the other direction. This one has the seam going to the left. This one has the seam going to the right. And if I pull this back, do you see that they are perfectly lined up? Now, I do go through, and I don't use a lot of pins, but I do go through and pin this because it's right at the start where you're going to be starting to sew to make sure that we got a pin that secures both the bottom and the top seam allowance. And then I just want to make sure that the bottom of it's lined up. If you want to put a pin here, you can. If you're kind of like me and like to fly by the seat of your pants and don't want to put a pin there, that's perfectly all right. So on my sewing machine, I have the Bernina 97D foot, which is the fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now, if you don't have a foot like this, you some machines will have a setting that's a fourth of an inch seam, or you can always take a piece of masking tape and take your ruler and get and make sure you put your needle up when you do this but you can slide your ruler over so that it's a fourth of an inch from the edge of the seam or from the a fourth of an inch from the needle and put this on your machine particularly if you have a featherweight or something like this a lot of the people that have featherweights like to do that because then you know you're getting an accurate fourth of an inch seam line so whether you have it built into your machine or you have a foot or you need to use the masking tape it doesn't make any difference now on this machine right at the edge of this foot is the fourth of an inch and so that's where I'm going to place my fabric And so I'm going to go slow right there. You know, it's always right at the beginning or right at the end that you end up with a little wider seam allowance. And I don't sew over my pins. I take them out before I get there. And I've cut my thread. So now what you get when you do this is that you get, because I pinned that and we overlapped the seams, you can see that we have a perfect V and we have a fourth of an inch, which would be our seam allowance when we get ready to sew that to our quilt. So you would continue making pairs like this and you need five pairs, one, two, three, four, five for the side and you need one, two, three, four for the top and the bottom and then when you get after you sew the sides on then you're going to add this corner squares to the top and bottom and it's just another half square triangle it's just turned a little bit differently all right so we're going to take a short break from our sponsor and when we come back i'm going to show you the whole quilt and how easy it was to put the half square triangle border on it the Ironmatic Space Saver is an award-winning ironing board. It's ergonomic and user-friendly. Strap your iron directly to it and hang it behind a door or in a wardrobe to keep it hidden out of the way. Visit ironmatic.com to get yours today. 
Okay, so now you can see that I have sewn both borders to this panel. And let me just walk you through how I did that. First of all, I sewed five black units together for each side. And then I laid that on the edge of my quilt to determine where I needed to cut. And so you remember that we had this gray border that runs all the way around. And you can see I have a wider border of the gray at the top and the bottom. I just have about a fourth of an inch here on each side. Um, but I trimmed it down so that it fit my half square triangle strip. Okay, so the first thing I did was I cut off the, the top and the bottom so that I was sewing from this point to this point with this strip of half square triangles. Okay, so how do we sew that half square triangle border to the quilt? You're going to take the quilt panel and you're going to lay the border on it with the border side up. You want to be able to see right here where that cross is where we sewed those two half square triangles together. By doing that, you'll make sure that you have the perfect V. So you're going to sew panel one on that side, the, another panel with 10 half square triangle units on the other side. And so now the most important part, and I know that a lot of people will, will just take a border and not know exactly where they need to cut it. Um, you need to measure. And so I would measure from this half square triangle border to that half square triangle border to make sure that I have enough width to make the top and the bottom fit perfectly. And once you have the sides on, on the top and bottom panels, you're going to add this extra corner. And you'll see it's turned a little bit differently so that it makes a curve around or makes a turn around the corner. And if you're thinking about quilting this, wouldn't it be cool to have something that kind of wandered in and out and around the corner? and around and around and around the corner. It's a perfect place to add a special quilting element. All right, so once you have the half square triangle unit sewn onto your quilt, the next thing we need to do again is measure. So now we're going to measure from here to that side for the top borders, for this black border. And I put this black border in, and it's one that's commonly used to kind of float the whole design so that everything from the red and the center all the way across, so that that's really what shows up. You remember I said black recedes or dark colors recede? You can see how that dark color on the very edge pushes everything else forward so that you're looking at the part that you really want to show off. All right, so we're working on this black border that's going to float the whole design. And so let's measure from this point to the bottom triangle here. And that's, that's the dimension that will cut the side borders for this black border. We'll sew both of those on. Again, we'll press them so that the seam allowances go toward the border. And then we're going to measure again to determine what size to make the top and the bottom. Again, when you sew this black one on, you're going to put, want to put the plain border underneath because you can see that we have points on the red ones now that we're dealing with, right? And so you always want to work with those piece blocks facing up as you're sewing to be able to sew those on and make sure that you hit right where that V, where we sewed the half square triangles together. And if you do that, how easy is that? Now, can't you just see uh, this being laid on a floor and putting a, a, a baby as they get their three month and six month and pictures that we, every, we see all over Facebook? 
would be adorable to have your little girl or your little boy laying on this particular quilt. You know, one of the things that we always wonder is, how wide do we make our borders? Well, you don't want to overshadow whatever's in your panel. And so for this particular quilt, I measured Mickey's ear, which was a little over six inches. So I was comfortable then knowing that if I did a four inch square, it wouldn't overwhelm that ear. Or it might be a, a panel that has a flower on it. And so say it's got a big couple big blossoms on it. Uh, measure that flower and then just make sure that none of your borders are bigger than that. Okay? Um, you know, we used to call these cheater fabric, but with the advent of digital printing, we are getting some beautiful printed panels to use. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our class today with the Disney Mickey and Minnie panel. And so our sponsors will be providing prizes for the giveaway. So you want to make sure you register. And those prizes will be coming from Bernina, Branson, Ironmatic Ironing Board, Panasonic Iron, Star Forest Quilts, and Tracy's Tables. Lots of great prizes, so don't forget to go register, and you'll find that link in the description. So until next time, we'll work on a new panel. We'll see you then.